Perplexity have just released an AI agent tool for NA10 and using this tool you can create amazing research articles just like this one here where we can see here the state of artificial intelligence, breakthrough challenges and I mean look at all this, it's like a full essay with references. This here, why is this such a big advancement? Well, perplexity it isn't an AI model as such but it's a framework for researching, right? So here I'm using Google Gemini 2.5, right? Which is a free to use model for the first 500 requests. Now, when I use this model with an NA10 agent, I would have to add on something to search the internet here. Now to search, it would normally be like a web scraping tool or something, and it's just not fine tuned for search the way perplexity is. Now perplexity is notoriously the best research AI product on the market right now. So normally to use Perplexity you'd have to try and do some HTTP requests and it'd be really complicated. Whereas now they have their native integration for AI agents inside NA10. So I'm going to show you how you can build this. It's super simple and you know let's just get started. So the first thing to do and for reference as well this here this template will be inside of my free school community AI Automation Hub and it will be inside here one of the posts. Literally just go up to the top, search, perplexity, and it will pop up. It will also be the first link in the description below. So let's build this from scratch. The first thing we want to do here is let's create an AI agent. So if we click on plus and we'll go to on chat message down here and this will then open up this on chat message which is a way for us to talk to agents. We then click plus here, AI, AI agent, and then boom, we now have a message which connects the AI agent. But this AI agent is just the framework. We need to connect it to a model and then the tool perplexity. So for model, we're going to click Google Gemini here. There we go, because again, that's free. I'll show you how to set up the API in a minute. And for the tool, we want to get perplexity. Now, if you look here and you can't find perplexity, let me show you how you can make sure you get it. So I'm running this here on any 10 Cloud. A link in the description so you can start using NA10 today. But on NA10 Cloud, you have to make sure you're running the right version. So you want to come over here to the admin panel, and then this will redirect us to here. So from here, we got to manage, and we want to make sure that we're on the latest NA10 version, which right now is 1.99. So this is the latest beta version because they're testing a few different things like perplexity, like community nodes as well which is a brand new feature they've got so you can sign up to the starter plan using the link below and then get this here and then that's you sorted so if we head back in to my instance we have this here we then will be able to have this perplexity node now this perplexity node you can see here that we connect it to perplexity blah 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 a bunch of other stuff including the models which we'll get to in a moment so this is literally it here we just have to set up the credentials and we're good to go. So on Gemini, if we open this up, we want to sign in to our credentials. So how do we get these? Well, we click on this pen here, and then you want to get your API key. To get your API key, you head on over to aistudio.google.com. Delete that there. There we go. And from here, this is essentially Google's AI Playground or AI Studio. You go up to the top, get API key, and then from here, create API key, and then you just select an existing Google project and then click create API key. You can just copy that one. If you don't have a Google project, all you have to do is go to console.cloud.google.com. And then from here, you just create a project. It's literally that simple. So, for example, here, top left, this here, project picker. This opens this up. You can click new project, give it a name, and that's you. And then you can go and create your API key. And then you copy that key, paste it in here, save it. And you now have a chatbot. Now we're going to select the latest model, which is 2.5, and we want to go Flash, and we'll go Flash Preview, this one here, because Flash is their fastest model. And pre uh, Preview, it's because it's still in Preview mode, and 5.20 is the 20th of May version. So it's the latest version that they have right now on that there. Now, for reference, if you want to know more about the APIs inside of Google, you can come over here to the AI Studio, and on the right hand side, we have run settings. So I have Gemini 2.5 Pro Preview. And from here, you can see if we click on it, we have Pro Preview, we have Flash, and they see new, these are the latest ones. And on this, you can have a look and see what it says. It'll 
at first it's kind of intimidating, but essentially down the bottom if you look, you get 10 free requests per minute or 500 a day. So 500 times this model can run per day. Be aware for an AI agent that it can take up a few runs for one run of the agent because the agent could think, then it can go and use perplexity, then it can use that and try and write the thing out, etc, etc. So just be aware that one agent run could be like four actual runs, but still 500 you have a day. So, you know, loads. Now, once you have that set up, we can talk as an agent, but let's set up perplexity. So inside perplexity here, again, we want to set up a credential. So perplexity account, we click the pen or pencil icon, and we go get our API key. So if you go to perplexity.ai, so I'll just show you here, and then you just want to sign up or sign in. Once you have signed up or signed in, you click on your account. Let me move because my camera's in the way. Click on account. And then from here, you want to go here to API keys. And you normally, you want to add some credits, right? So you can add like $5. For this $5, I've done quite a bit of stuff because perplexity, if you do deep research, can be like a little bit costly. It can be like, you know, 80 cent for a massive report. But if you just use the normal one, it is like pennies at a time. So you could do like loads of research for just a couple of pence. It's crazy. So you want to go to the bottom one here. I had to go and look again. <laughs> API key. And from this API key, you can then create these. So I'll have to delete these now because you'll have seen them. Um, but you just click create key and that shows sorted. You can just now highlight it. Copy that. Then we bring it over here. Then we'll just paste that in. Bam. Save. I now connected up. I'll just test the connection, make sure that it's working. And there we go. So, tool description. We'll let this set automatically. Because AI agents use LLMs, you have to give them a description in natural language. So, you have to let this, or you could decide it yourself, but we'll just let it automatically describe it. Because NAN is really good at that. Operation. So, I want it to message the model. Because as I was saying, you used to have to API call this. So, create a whole... HTTP request and send that across, whereas now you can just click message and you're sorted. Now as for models, so there's a bunch of models here, you can go and get more information on which are which in this docs.perplexity.ai forward slash models. And inside here, you can see they have search models, research models, reasoning models, offline models as well. This one's a DeepSeek R1 post trained, which is pretty cool. You can see here it says uncensored, unbiased, and factual. The reason it says that is because the original DeepSeek was created in such a way because it's not a because of its origin, right? There are certain things that it will refuse to answer, right? So it can it refuses to speak out about certain people or it refuses to acknowledge historical facts. Whereas this post-trained one actually has that information. So anyway. You get a bunch of models. The main one to use generally is just Sonar. That's the standard model. So if we come over here and go model, Sonar, boom. And then in here, this is the message you want to send perplexity. Now, you could add in whatever you want. You could even have seen people get the chat message here and bring that in, which I'll show you in a minute how you could do that. But I mean, it kind of defeats the point because in that instance, then you're just going to miss this entire model out. So really what you want to do in here is just click this, let the model define this parameter, and this will then let the AI agent decide what text to send to perplexity. And what this does now is it allows your agent, so in this instance, we have Google Gemini using this agent agentic framework, so as a Google Gemini AI agent can then use perplexity for whatever it wants, and it can decide what it wants. And that's literally it. And role here, user, you can have assistant or system, these will change how the model interacts, but user will actually use it like a message, right? So we have that all set up. I always add a memory as well, so a simple memory here. Now what this does, it just remembers the last five chats inside your chat essentially here. And uh, basically what it means is you could say, hi, I'm Luke, I'm researching this. And then in the next message, it will still remember that you're called Luke and you're researching this, etc. So which is really handy. So everything is set up. Let's give it a try. So we can say something like, Hi, my name is Luke. Tell me in one bullet point the latest in AI. So, Gemini already knows to go and use perplexity. Comes back, and there you go. Recent advancement in AI have led to the development of tools like AI. 
bullet point generators. <laughs> so things I've tried to know about bullet points. But if we open up this here, so we can see we have the chat, right? We have the logs, which is, you can go through here and see exactly what's happening, right? Which we'll look at in a moment. And then we have here the input and the output. So if we click on this message or model, we can see that I've said this here. Hi, my name is Luke, Tim one bullet point, latest than the AI. Google Gemini has then read that, right? And it's sent to perplexity here. Tell me in one bullet point the latest in AI. Which then has gone, and you can see it goes to sonar, usage, blah, 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 citations. So it then goes and gets like the actual um, different web pages that it looks up, um, different search results, etc. And then it brings back, you know, this, this message here. Boom. With references. Which is super cool. And as I was saying to you, the way you can actually send the message directly to Perplexity is inside here, where it says defined by the model. We can remove that, delete that. And up on the left, so this is the input, this is the output. On the left-hand side, you can have schema, table, JSON, right? Whichever one you want. But if we go here, instead of from AI, we can go to mapping. That mapping, we can then see previous nodes in this workflow, a node being when chat message received or AI agent. And even these are nodes as well, but they're just not workflow nodes. So these aren't nodes which come one after another. Whereas these are, so like I click plus, you can see there's a bunch of nodes here. I can do like some data transformations. I could run some code. I could, you know, split something out, whatever it may be. Anyway, so basically the way then I can pull in this chat message directly to perplexity is in mapping, we can then grab this chat input. And you can see this in a different few different ways. JSON, which is this key value pair system. So you have the key and then the value. Or you can see it as a table, which, you know, represents the key value. So you can see what it's meaning. Or schema, where it has it in this way, which is sometimes easier to view. So just click that, drag it, pop it in there. And now whatever you input will go directly to perplexity. So the latest in AI, please. Boom. And then Gemini now will go into the agent it will then think that it will have to go and use perplexity, or hopefully. Oh, there we go. It has not. Right. So why not? This is an interesting part about AI agents, right, is that they, you have to give them defined instructions. Otherwise, they've got kind of some degree of, I was going to say free will, but basically they can choose what to do or they will do something which isn't defined, undefined. So if we go into the AI agent here, we can then go into the options and add a system message and we can say use, we'll say use perplexity when you want to research or search the internet. We'll say at first you are a researching agent, use perplexity, blah, blah, blah. So if we come back again and let's rerun this. So in here, we can just hover over the message and we can either repost it or reuse. Reuse means we can then edit it like this. Repost it will just automatically repost it. And there we go. So Google Gemini agent. Hopefully now it thinks to search and it'll go and try and use perplexity. But here, it may not know again because of the message, right? Up here, message a model in perplexity. Let's change that to just say perplexity dash research tool and that will save that as the new name and then let's clear this session because I have a funny feeling it's trying to use its memory but its memory is not what I want it to know let's send that in and hopefully this time there you go so it's using perplexity now to actually do some research now if you're using just sonar this shouldn't take too long could take up to a minute to be fair but if you're using deep research that could take you know a minute, two minutes, three minutes to actually research. But there you go. Like, I mean, look at this. This is, this is incredible. Look at that compared to what we just had a moment ago using only Gemini. And so as you can see, super powerful tool. I highly recommend leveraging this if you're using any agents for research. So again, if you want this direct workflow that you can just drag and drop in, so literally you can just go up here, three dots, and then you can click import from file, right? Or you can just copy and paste the JSON, which will be in the newest post on here. Then you can go and get that. Also, I do have a paid community, so AI Automation Pro, where essentially what we offer here is a comprehensive understanding of AI, of NA10, and every automation I've ever created. So if we go on here, you can see that we have a bunch, an AI tweet one, we have a video generator, etc. 
but also we have when you first join a free initial kind of consultation where we will create an NEN blueprint just for you depending on your exact use case. I will create it myself and give it back to you within 24 hours. And if you ever need help, you can then go to the get help, fill out this form and I will get back to you again within 24 hours. I'll fix your workflow, I'll tell you how you can fix it, whatever it may be, right? Additionally, we do have a way to make money inside the community. So you can make money by referring others like everywhere else, like affiliate commission. But we actually reward the top three people in the community each week, 15, 10 or $5, meaning you could win up to $75 per month just by joining and posting, commenting, helping everyone out. So if you want to become an AI Automation Pro, check out, it will be linked in the description below. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.